Greetings, beautiful viewers. This is Smitten. This arrow is aimed at your heart. Welcome to episode 24 of How to Fail at Smite, and today we're looking at lover boy himself, Cupid. One of the problems with the recent focus on jungling and Smite is that it makes one of the lanes really, really boring. So I've done us all a favor and sped up the video. This video was recorded a couple days before the patch that came out with the map changes. Oh, how I will miss these days where the trees look like broccoli and the lanes took forever to run down. Speaking of the changes, I'm curious about how you guys feel about being in the solo lanes. Does this recent focus on jungling add to the game or take away from it? Are you enjoying Smite more today than you were yesterday? I mean, personally, I really like the new look of the new map, but I haven't played enough of it to really form a solid opinion on it yet. But sadly, this will be the last fail video that features the old map. Rest in peace, broccoli trees. Chapter 1. Words are a thing, right? Seven minutes in and we're still pushed up the lane. We've spent most of our time right here. Ugh, I would kill for some action. When all of a sudden Baka appears behind us on the minimap, Ymir and I turn around to be greeted by Baka's ult that gets stunted by Odin's ring of spears. I drop a few hearts to heal me up and dash through the ring of spears when I get the chance. I want to make sure that Ymir's okay and I turn to look at him. I mean, as a carry, it's my job to look after my support. Despite my rarely useful running in circles tactic, Odin kills me off. When you're playing Cupid, make sure to save your dash for after your opponent uses their jump. Chapter 2, not today. Ymir can't handle being in a passive lane anymore, and so he negotiates with our right lane while I am distracted by Odin who is brazenly wandering through my jungle. After missing about half of my auto attacks, he moves into my blue buff. This is the perfect time to trap him. Wait a second. Okay, Smitten, let's think about this. Why would Odin do something so odd like that? Oh, I know, I know! He needs mana? But why is he now running away? I love you! Chapter 3, the first of many. Back to the boring lane, this time my partner is Aphrodite. We push up to get a few shots in on the tower when Odin locks me in. I start spazzing out and running around trying not to hit Odin so I don't grab aggro from the tower. Aphrodite's ult saves me from some of the damage and as soon as I can I bolt out of range. When we start to move backwards to meet up with our creep, we find Baka butchering them. I take advantage of him being way out of position and lay down my ult and heart bomb. We move in on Baka Sir. We've got this one in the back until he panics and jumps away. We round the corner, hot on his heels. Aphrodite's kiss barely misses, and just as we almost catch up with him, Odin's Gungnir's might slows us down. Instead of heading towards him through the jungle, I cut out into the lane and my heart bomb gets snagged on a minion. It is better to have loved and won than to have loved and lost. Loser! Shut up, Cupid! Chapter 4, Uno Mas? Okay, this time, I've got it. The tower is so close to going down. Crap, Odin, ugh, how many times can I get myself trapped in the exact same frickin' situation? Okay, calm down, Smitten. Let's recover some of that lost ego. At least it's not technically the same situation. Baka Sura was here for the last ordeal. Really? Really? I guess you could say that I deserve this. Pushing a tower knowing there's a jungle Baka without wards or support from other teammates. You're just begging to be killed. Chapter 5. My bad. So we finally claim the first tower and we are quickly on our way towards taking down the second one when Zeus rounds the corner and starts to close in on us. I get as many shots in as I can on the tower before Aphrodite and I start to back off. I turn around for a moment thinking about engaging but decide to retreat instead. But as we turn to leave, Odin jumps in from the jungle and ults. And so after squirming around trying to dodge his attacks, I try to collect my hearts to regain some of my missing health. Just when I think we've made it out, I turn to see Baka emerging from the jungle, joining the pursuing Zeus and Odin. I use fields of love to slow them, but move back up the lane instead of using the slow to retreat. Aphrodite's ult gets us out of most of Baka's damage, but thanks to me, we're not getting out of this one. I catch the first zap of chain lightning and Zeus picks up a double kill. Chapter 6, Hopeless, Clueless, and Aimless. I am getting awfully sick of this Odin, and I think it's time that we take advantage of him being out of position for once. As we keep Odin's attention on us, Ralk comes down the lane through his retreat path and we close in on him. And thanks to my terrible ult placement, Odin slowly and casually just walks out of the damage burst. I dash forward to finish him off, but due to some awkward footing, I step out of his way? We end up with the kill, but it would have happened much sooner if I had taken a half a second longer to place my ult, and if I would have given Odin safe passage. Cupid, stop! Chapter 7. That's too bad. Aphrodite, Ymir, and I find Odin hanging out in the jungle and we all dive in on him. I land my heart bomb on him and we all move in to engage, but find Guan Yu around the corner. Odin moves back and slams down his ring of spears and then promptly jumps out. Odin seems intent on wasting his teammates' ults as Guan Yu tries his hardest to squeeze into the ring. 
Chapter 8. Help, help, I'm being repressed! We return to find a team fight in left lane, and I am always eager to join in on the fun. I'm well aware that my ult is off cooldown, but not aware that my team has decided not to follow my charge into the battle. Trapped in place and under heavy pressure, I'm immediately regretting this decision. Zeus, why you do that? A few moments later, we bulldozed the enemy Manable. A good game to my opponents and a good game and well played to my teammates. This was an interesting game, and I'm curious as to how it would have turned out if Ymir stayed in my lane instead of switching with Aphrodite. But with great communication and quick decision making, we pulled off a win. Cupid was more difficult for me than other ranged carries. I kept getting his heart bomb caught on minions, and when I did land it on a god, my passive wasn't completely stacked. If you compare his kit to other ranged carries like Neath or Artemis, I think his abilities require just a little more accuracy than the others, so work on your skill shots. Have you ever been so in love that you feel like your heart will explode? Do you wanna be? Then Cupid is for you! And now for the juicy bits! Cupid's passive is Love Struck, which stacks up to 10 times. Each stack increases the damage and healing of his abilities by 3% to a maximum of 30%. At 10 stacks, Heart Bomb and Fields of Love will also stun for one second. It's crucial to watch that meter and land your hits when it's full to maximize his damage. Heart Bomb is his first ability, a line attack that deals 40 to 170 physical damage scaled by 100% of his physical power. It deals this damage initially when hitting and again when it explodes, dealing AoE damage to all opponents within a 20 foot radius. Remember the stun and damage bonus from using this ability once you gain 10 stacks. Throw a point into this at level 1 and max it first. Share the Love is the second ability, where Cupid drops 3 hearts on the ground that heal Cupid or an ally for 30 to 110 scaled by 25% of his physical power. When an ally picks up a heart, Cupid gets 30 mana restored up. Throw a point into this at level 3 and max it second. His third ability, Flutter, is his line dash that, like Hebo's wave, also increases the movement speed of allies in the trail left behind. In addition, for 6 seconds after ending his dash, he gains a 5 to 25% attack speed bonus. Throw a point into this at level 2 and max it last. His ultimate, Fields of Love, is an AoE that slows by 35% and cripples opponents caught in its radius, and if they're still within the radius when it detonates, they are dealt 220 to 540 physical damage scaled by 100% of Cupid's physical power, and mesmerized for 2.5 seconds. If used when Cupid has full stacks, this applies a hard stun for 1 second when the hearts detonate. For items, Cupid is your standard ranged physical carry, and as such, the standard build applies. If you'd like, you can start off with Dust Hole or dive straight into Warrior's Tabby. After that, pick up Executioner for the additional attack speed and penetration and follow that up with Devourer's Gloves for raw physical power and lifesteal ones at full stacks. You could choose to substitute Jotun's Wrath for Devourer's Gloves to both decrease his cooldowns and provide additional penetration, as Cupid's Hearts can already provide decent sustain if used properly. Next on the list, if you're ahead, pick up Deathbringer. However, on Cupid, I prefer picking up Rage first, as the additional attack speed can really help keep his passive stacks at maximum. Either way, you'll pick up both and round the build off with either Titan's Bane for raw penetration or defensive items like Bulwark of Hope for magical protection or Hide an Emian Line for those pesky physical characters. And so concludes the guide on Cupid. If we tickled your fancy, make sure to rate and subscribe for upcoming videos. You can also come hang out with us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to follow us on Twitch to see us streaming live. Links in the description. Feel free to leave your suggestions on how to play this god as well as any feedback you have for us in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, I'm Smitten, and I'll see you next time.